Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, this is the continuation of our series of how to make an avatar. So last week we covered um, pretty much the basics of Blender as well as getting started with importing um, and getting everything kind of situated. We got the the body and the head and the hair. Um, so for this tutorial, um, we are going to cover merging our armature and double checking our weight painting. Um, it should be a fairly short tutorial. Um, I'm going to follow it up with one on how to sculpt because that's going to be kind of our um, next like basis for getting our clothing and stuff ready. So um, I guess with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so last time we left off, I did say that I wanted to um, show you guys how I personally fix um, things like this head cap being the wrong color. Um, if you're in or if you're not like accessible to something like Procreate on the iPad or Adobe, um, which are the the more so top um, tier like editing programs, um, and we're, we'll also cover sculpting like to fix that in the the next video. But um, there is a website that I use uh, pretty religiously that I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through to fix stuff like this for this head cap. So let me make sure. Okay, it's called Poofy Fair. So open it up. It is called BeFunky.com. Uh, it's B-E-F-U-N-K-Y. I'll try to remember to put that down in the description. Um, if I don't, it's it's right here. Um, just BeFunky.com. You hit get started and we're going to edit a photo. And I'm going to click start new because I have another project open. So I'm going to find Oh no, whoops. I have a lot that I'm working on. Beauty hairs, there it is. Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop in the photo that we want to um, edit. And this program, um, I, the reason why I'm trying to bring it up in my tutorials um, is, like I said, just in case you don't have access to you know, Adobe or Procreate or anything like that. I personally use Procreate on my iPad, but if you don't have access to something like this, this website's uh, completely free. Some of their um, stuff to use is, you know, paid for content, like if you upgrade to their like pro account. But the basis of it's pretty um, usable without having to, to pay for anything. So I'm going to come over here to the color. Sometimes I have to play with it, like honestly, each... Um, photo it seems like is different so I just ended up going to exposure and I'm going to turn down the brightness up the contrast oh, down the highlights and now it's black so um, that's kind of an easy way to to edit your pictures um, oh no 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 hold on <laughs> I didn't want that to be shown on screen um, I don't want I don't want um, YouTube to yell at me for potentially having nudity. Let me just copy paste that, leave that there. And then open things. Okay, so here's an example uh, for an avatar that I'm working on. So this is just kind of an example of something that you can do. So I put in Zinpia's, because um, that's the base that I'm using. Uh, the I just drug in the body texture, and then I have um, like three different body textures that I'm merging. So as you can see here, I just made layers, uh, which honestly, by doing that, all I had to do is like open my files and just like drag it on, and it'll say, "Do you want to paste it or replace?" And you'll just say "layer," and it'll layer it up for you. Um, which we'll do that, and then we'll just delete that. But um, so what I did here for like the tattoos is I just, if you can see that blue line, it snaps to the border of the image. So it lines it all up for me. And that's how I put a lot of my tattoos on my avatars. So if you're, um, you know, looking around on Jinxie or something and you find a tattoo that you like and you're like, man, I don't really know how to put this on because most tattoos will come as PNGs, meaning it won't have that base body texture behind it. It's just the tattoos themselves. If you're like, oh, I don't know how to put it on, um, you can do that in Unity with like decals, I think, with Poyomi. I'm not super familiar with it. This is how I do it. Um, 
because I can toss it on here, upload it. That way I have it in Blender, but um, that way whenever I go into Unity, I can still use the like emission textures that came with the tattoo pack. So I just wanted to share this program. Um, it's helpful for like changing colors like that, and it's also helpful for like throwing on your tattoo since it kind of cl um, snaps. So it lines everything up for you. Um, so yeah, it's called BeFunky.com. Just wanted to share it with you guys in case that helps anybody. Um, black fur. Save. And go. Okay. And that's how I do a lot of my um, edits. Like especially whenever my like iPad is dead or something. And see. Now it matches. It's a little dark because I don't have like specular paint on. Now it, now it matches a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that we left off with the last video that I promised I would show you guys. So uh, we'll go ahead and get straight back to um, the armature and the weight painting. So if you remember last time, we used this merge armatures um, option and we went ahead and merged everything. But if you remember, when I clicked on the head, all right, like it's we have the neck isn't following it, the head's not, f or the hair's not following it, like, so there's, there's some things that we need to fix up. Um, and the reason I'm going to cover this before we start adding more clothing is because it's pretty much a rinse and repeat with building an avatar. You're going to put in your materials or your assets, you know, like your clothes, your jewelry, whatever. You're going to get it lined up, you're going to merge the avatar, or armature, I can't talk tonight, and then, um, you know, do these next steps, which is fixing up the armature, weight painting, and then the next video, which will be sculpting. So to get started, you're going to click on your armature. I do have custom colors in my blender, so I think for y'all, whenever you click it, I think it shows up as white. It might be orange. I don't remember. Um, but if you're not too sure, just make sure it's highlighted over here. So you can click it there, armature. Uh, tab into s edit mode, which reminds me to turn on my keys. So we'll tab into edit mode. And here you can see, so this is the hair root. Oh, sugar. Sorry, my cat's like screaming. I don't know if y'all could hear her. You can move this bone if you want. Um, you can also like, I think you can join it to the head bone. I don't really remember how to do that. But point is, um, I normally just leave it because I honestly for the life of me can't remember how to join it. But um, so the problem is that this is the, okay, let me, let me slow down and explain. The reason why I don't join it to the, the head bone is whenever I go into Unity, it's going to look something like this. Alright, so it'll say like, um, head root, it'll, well it won't quite be exactly like this, it will change here in a minute, but anyways, so I would go down to hips, um, spine, chest, neck, head. And then here in a minute, it'll move over here, but it would show head and then it would say like hair root bone. The reason why I do that is it's going to be easier for me to just keep things minimized because I like to have things minimized. And then I can select like um, like shift click select all of the hair bones underneath this one and assign the fizz bones like all at once, um, which I can do if it's out. It just for me, it keeps it just a little bit nicer. So there's my reason why I don't merge it. If you want to merge it, you can. I just don't really remember how to do that. I haven't done it in so long, so I apologize. But it's not too big of a deal. Um, so what you're going to do, we do need to parent it though. So go ahead and click on that bone. And you're going to come over here to this bone icon on the right side. And you're going to go to this one, which says relations. Here where it says parent, just type in head. See, so now it moved. All right. And you can see if we were to move it, there's that little red line and that's how you know uh, what bone it's parented to. So all these little hair bones are parented to the hair root bone. Hair root bone is now parented to the head. So if we leave exit mode and go in or er, edit mode, go into pose mode, you can see it's now following the head. So a lot of people and servers I'll notice will ask like, oh my hair is not following or something. That's why. A uh, very, very simple fix. You just need to find that bone that's controlling what you need and parent it to whatever you need it to follow easy as that. So that's how you'll you'll fix things as you go through and you'll notice things aren't you know following. Now if it's something like the sports bra is not following her chest whenever it moves, the sports bra doesn't have any bones so that's a weight painting issue. 
which we will cover that um, here in just a second. Let me find, yeah, I'll go, I guess I'll go ahead and use Squirtle. So I'm going to uh, delete all of the vertex groups is what they're called. So I'm basically deleting the weight painting on it. So now if we very gently come in here so I don't get in trouble with YouTube, I'm going the wrong way. Ah! Okay, so as you can see, it's not uh, working, right? So if you have something like that, um, I do have another tutorial that covers this. So if you already have seen that or you know how to do this, you can skip this part. But if you have any clothing or assets or anything that you have that's not rigged and you want to add it to your avatar, a lot of people get worried about that. And they're like, oh, I have to manually weight paint. That's stressful and it can't do work. And wow, well, what do I do? And it, it scared the crap out of me. I completely understand. When I first started, it's not that big a deal. A uh, trick that another creator learned, I think they were in Blue Server, I can't remember their name though, but something that they taught me, so this doesn't have any vertex groups. Vertex groups are basically like, you can think of it as like the specific uh, groups of polys or faces or edges, whatever you want to consider of the mesh. It's like groups of the mesh that it's reading off of to know how to move and when it matches the body. So like you know, like uh, the the arm on the shirt. So the arm on the body is under the vertex group left arm. Same thing with the, the shirt. So if those two match in name, then it'll read its weight painting so that it knows how to move. So vertex groups are what we're going to pay a lot of attention to. So there's none on this anymore. So obviously, like I showed you, it doesn't move with the body. So what you do is you click the body, shift, and click the mesh that you want to edit and it'll look like this so it'll be kind of like a darker blue for the the base mesh and then a lighter one for the one that you selected I'm gonna come over here to object mode and select weight paint now you don't have to do anything manually there's a trick you can do you go to weights transfer weights okay oh it's just the tummy it's not working like no it pops up down here it's really small it's hard to hard to see transfer mesh data is what it says if you click that I'm going to turn off my keys so you can actually see it. Um, so if you open up this menu down here, there's a few things you want to change and the rest just leave it by itself. Vertex mapping, if you click that and go to nearest face interpolated, and then this ray radius, change that to 5. And then where it says a source layer select, so right beneath that 5, by name. As you can see, everything else you know, it popped back up. So if we come up here to the chest, you can see it's now way painted back to that um, the individual chest bones there and the actual chest here. So now, I'm going to go back into pose mode. Maybe. Ah, there we go. And ta-da! It moves again. And on occasion, um, I will say a, a kind of a glitch that I, I run into sometimes is I'll do that and it'll show up, but it won't actually work with the weight painting. Um, if that ever happens and you're like, I've done the buttons, just come back into weight pull. Um, sorry, weight painting mode. I cannot talk. Um, and just kind of like, you know, click on something. Make sure that you see those colors and then just tab back out um, or go back into object mode and that'll fix it. It's not really something I can replicate um, here on recording, but just on occasion I've noticed that like I'll do the data transfer and it won't seem like it's like sticking, it won't work. Uh, you just have to put it back into weight painting mode for a second and then leave it again. And it sounds really weird and like I'm crazy, but sometimes that's that's just it. That's the fix. Um, and that's how you can auto weight paint. So, you know, if you ever have any issues with any clothing, you know, once we do our body sculpt, we'll probably want to do this again just to make sure that it's matching the body. Um, and then, like you said, you know, if you find any clothing or assets that don't have any um, armature or weight painting done to it, then it's simple. You can you can just do that. Obviously, that won't work for something like hair. Hair and things like that need to be rigged. But for clothing and jewelry, um, hats, you know, you can you can do that so that you don't have to manually weight paint it. And then if it is something like a hat and you weight paint it, um, just be aware to check it. It might weight paint to the eyes. So normally what I'll do is you can find like, um, well, I'll be on here. But let's say, you know, this one was the head. You can lock it 
can hit this down arrow and then hit delete um, all, all unlocked groups. And then you could delete the extra ones that aren't necessary. So if it was a hat, you could lock the head and then make sure that it's not going to accidentally move or something wherever the eyes move. Um, so yeah, other than that, you know, like this bra and stuff, it technically has the fingers on here, but if you come into a uh, weight paint mode, whenever it's solid blue like that, that means there's no weight for that vertex group. Whenever it has color, you know, that means that there is weight painting. So these extra ones, you don't have to worry about those. It's okay that they're on there. Um, you don't have to go through and like delete them each time. You just might want to double check, especially if you have like a sweater or something. Um, just double check those extra ones to make sure that it didn't accidentally copy any weight paint over. So that is how you fix up armature whenever it's not following your uh, avatar. And that's how you can do uh, weight painting fixing. Very, very fast. Very, very simple. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll make a little video of us throwing on some clothing and things like that onto her um, just to kind of walk us through the steps a little bit more. But it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Uh, we'll throw on, you know, clothing and merge the armature and then we'll sculpt it, which I'll, I'll do that here in this next video um, on the sculpting video so that you can kind of see a little bit of everything that the videos have covered all at once. Um, and you're going to kind of keep doing that until you're, you got everything on your avatar and then it'll be time to move off to Unity. So the blender work honestly isn't too hard or too long. It is, but it's not. It is in the fact that like you have to double check your weight painting. You have to sculpt things. There is clipping issues, especially around like the shoulders and the armpits, things like that. Those kind of um, squished up spots of the, the body mesh. And that's something that we'll cover. Um, so avatar creation is easy without being easy. It's a lot of work, but it's overwhelming at first. But once you get into it, there's actually, it's not like, you know, it's not too much. It is hard, but it's not at the same time as long as things don't <laughs> don't break. Um, but most of the time it's, it's relatively not too bad. Um, it does take a lot of hard work though and a lot of creativity and a lot of fixing. The I, I feel like a lot of it goes into the unity work. I feel like Blender's the, the happy place, but that's just me. So yeah, it's not too bad, not too bad to, to at least get started on avatar creation. Once you get into the more advanced stuff, it might be a little bit more hectic and stressful, but yeah, pretty simple tutorial for you guys. Um, I think that's really all I have. It's a pretty, pretty fast video. Um, I will have the sculpting one out directly after this. They're going to release on the same day, so if you're ready to move on, then you can go ahead and head over to that other video. Um, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys over there.